All right, so the data is now ready. So we can now directly feed this data to an LSTM based model. And what we need to do now is to have to define the model architecture and train it, right? So define the RNN or the LSTM model. So I'm going to build a very simple sequential model in the first uh, stage and in the next step we will make it a more complex model. Right? So you will have a RNN architecture with 10 cells and for each word you're going to feed the corresponding vector which we have generated and this will go for all the words in the batch. Let's say you have uh, first sentence, you have second sentence, you have third sentence. So first cell will accept the ve word vectors which are of 50 dimensions for all of the sentences. Right? The second RNN cell will accept the word vectors for all the second words in across all the sentences and these vectors are also 50 dimension. Right? Okay, so this we are going to give and you will finally have, let's say this output is a 64 dimensional output, which is the uh, activation coming from each cell and this 64 dimensional vector, we will feed to a classifier with, with five nodes. So we, we will feed it to a dense layer with, with a softmax activation. So that will te tell us which emoji will get activated. So the, it, it will tell us which emoji to activate and we will get the corresponding probability let's say 0 0.5 0 0.3 0 0.2 and so on right okay so this is my model architecture in the first step right? so let us create a sequential model model equals to sequential and followed by a model dot add you add a lstm cell and the hidden state should have 64 dimensions and input shape right so input shape is going to be 10 comma 50 you are getting 10 words in each sentence each with a maximum dimensions of 50 and you can add a dropout for regularization let's say dropout is 0.5 and model dot add you add a dense layer with five units and you add a model uh, you also add activation which is let's say softmax on the top of it and finally you compile your model and summarize it right so loss is going to be categorical uh, cross entropy because it is a multi-way classification problem optimizer is let's say adam and the matrix on which you are going to maximize your uh, on which you want to monitor is going to be your accuracy and model dot sum. So yeah, we need to import layers also. So from Keras, we will uh, from Keras dot models import uh, sequential and from Keras dot layers import star. We are importing all the layers from it. So let's see uh, how does the model look like and next part would be to train the model right so you can see we have a LSTM layer and we are going to feed the embedding output followed by dropout dense and the activation layer and yeah so now we are going to train our model right so I can say hist equals to model dot fit and embedding matrix uh, train followed by y train so y train i think we should uh, convert y into one hot vectors that is left right so if i see what is the shape of y train dot shape so it is 132 so let us make one hot vectors right from keras dot utils import um, two categorical right so I can say y train equals to two categorical y train and number of classes 
equals to 5 we have 5 classes similarly for the y test is going to be two categorical y test followed by number of classes which is also 5 and print y train dot shape and now you can see how does the y train look like and let's see the zeroth example so it looks like this right okay so yeah i just executed this again so it created some problem so we will run this code again right so we have to run this cell again right and here i will specify the number of epochs is let's say 100 batch size uh, you can say let's say 64 is the batch size and shuffle at each epoch you are going to shuffle and validation split is 0.2 okay expected activation to have shape 5 but yeah so we have a dense layer with 5 units so some problem with our y train right okay so let us just run all the cells again and let us wait for the And you can see training has now started and after uh, each epoch you can see the validation accuracy is increasing and after a certain time the validation accuracy has started dipping so it was kind of maximum at this point and then it started decreasing right so it is kind of fluctuating but the training accuracy you can see it it is almost reached 100% which means we are doing overfitting right so the way to prevent overfitting is we uh, we can use early stopping right so there is lot of fluctuation in the validation data because uh, your data set is very small right so you have a very small data set and it is difficult to do a validation on this kind of a data right so that there is a lot of fluctuation in the training data uh, in the accuracy right so you have a training accuracy of 96 percent and validation accuracy of 59 percent right so what you can do you can um, use early stopping callback and before that uh, we will first see how does the model perform if we on the test data right so let, let us see the predictions on test data model dot predict classes and I give embedding matrix of test okay and if I see what is predictions so I get an array so these are the corresponding image emoji labels for for the testing data right? and I can find out the accuracy if I give uh, model dot evaluate I give embedding matrix of test and embedding matrix of uh, yeah y test okay so it, it has a 58 percent of uh, validation accuracy right or, or testing accuracy which is uh, not bad but not too great right so if, if we talk about baseline right and assuming each class has equal number of samples you have five classes so by making a random guess right uh, you can only predict 20 percent of the emojis correctly right so baseline would be 20 percent and our accuracy is almost close to 59 percent which is still good right but not too great so one thing that we can try is uh, we can try to stop early right 
so instead of training for 100 epochs uh, let us try to put put a early stopping call back right so i can say uh, early stop equals to uh, early stopping and let's say patience equals to 10 right from keras dot callbacks import early stopping and from keras dot callbacks let us also create a checkpoint to save the model when the accuracy is good right import um, model checkpoint right so checkpoint equal to model checkpoint and you can see, give the path right so here you can uh, give the path what is the best model till now best model dot h5 and what you are going to monitor you are going to monitor let's say validation loss right? and verbose is true not going to save all the weights save best only which is true okay so we are going to save the best model when the validation accuracy is going to improve and we are going to uh, wait for uh, 10 epochs right so early stopping will have a patience of 10 right so if after 10 epochs the validation accuracy does not improve we will stop right so monitor here is also going to be validation accuracy Okay, so let us create the model again and see. Okay, so this time we have a validation accuracy which is uh, slightly higher, right? and let us see the predictions on the test set yeah so accuracy is not not increased so we should first restore the best model right so we can say model dot load weights and i can say best model dot h5 yeah now you can see the final accuracy of your model was 52 percent but when you load the best model right which is after some uh, which is after the early stopping you get an accuracy which is 62.5 percent right so it is still better right so you improved your accuracy from 58 percent to 62 percent by using early stopping and another way which you can use to improve your accuracy is to make a stacked lstm model maybe we can increase the complexity of the model and do the work that we will see in the next video so thanks a lot guys see you in the next part